Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play Jackson by Johnny Cash. <laughs> Jackson was a request from Alvaro and he sent me a list of his favourite country songs, uh, most of which I know and like, so I hopefully we'll be doing some more of those, Alvaro. Uh, this tune was not written by Johnny Cash, it was by Billy Wheeler and Jerry Lieber. In 1963 they wrote it. It was recorded by the Kingston Trio and then by Flatt and Scruggs. And finally in, well not finally, but in 1967 by Johnny Cash and June Carter. And that, this is the version that we're going to look at today. Um, what to do on it, uh, of course it doesn't have fiddle on the original, but it's a song that as a fiddle player you might well be asked to play in a country band. Uh, so we're going to look at the vocal melody and various approaches to the backing, uh, including um, off the beat chops and shuffles and a solo. So let's start off with uh, the melody itself, which isn't a great melody for the fiddle to be honest. We'll play it anyway because it's good for orientation so you know where you are in the song. The song actually starts off with eight bars of uh, just C on the guitar. And um, I think if that is actually going to happen then you've got to be doing something in there. Uh, something not too busy. So it might be... is um, mostly shuffles. That's actually the Georgia shuffle. Um, so you want to do something that makes it obvious that not very much is going to happen until the singer comes in. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't launch into a Hank Williams type fiddle intro on this song I don't think. So if, if you've got that guitar chugging away for eight bars then just chug away yourself. Uh, right, the melody, uh, I'll do it with the backing so you can see where you are. So just read through this with me as I go. Three, four. You might notice that the timing of the end is a bit odd and um, I'm not sure exactly how many bars it is but it's not the number that you would expect. <laughs> uh, but Johnny Cash of course is the one who gave us a, a famous 11 bar blues so um, anything, is, uh, anything could happen in a song like this. And what I just played is the, like the first verse, it's the phrasing of the first verse and of course all of the verses are different so all of the phrasing would be different. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about the detail of the verse. What's important is to be able to follow the chord sequence. So the simplest thing you can do is offbeat chops, that kind of thing. So to do this effectively you need to know um, what the double stops are available for each chord. So for a C, a C note with an E below it is a good one. Or you could have an E with a C below it. For an F, you could have a F with an A below it, or a F with an a, F and with an A above it. For the G chord, you can have a G with a B below it, or a G with a B above it, and lots of other combinations. But the lower ones, I think, are best when you're playing in this situation. So let's just hear that played over the uh, backing sequence. I'm bored already. And here we go to F. Back to F. 
harder to follow, obviously, without the singing going on. Um, and you do have to uh, be aware of the length of the Fs, Cs and Gs at the end. And you have to be aware that you've got an awful lot of C going on uh, in the first part of it. Um, so I wouldn't actually do chops all the way through there. You can also do shuffles. Um, so uh, the Nashville shuffle, and I do have a video about the Nashville shuffle, that would be for the F, the G, something like that. Um, you could do the Georgia shuffle, where instead of alternating down, up, down, up, you start with an up, and then all of the accents are on down. So some kind of mixture of um, chops and shuffles, um, both the Nashville and the Georgia, is going to work. Let's just try mixing those up. let's say to a singing guitarist, then actually that amount of messing around I think will be too much and you should try for a bit more consistency. But if you're in, let's say, a five-piece band with a drummer and whatnot, then uh, you've got quite a lot of room to, um, to change what you're doing through the sections. One thing I was doing there, which I didn't tell you about, is mixing in bits of long notes with little phrases. So stuff like... Um, <laughs> That gives you loads of freedom to do what you want, uh, but it also needs quite a lot of experience to make those phrases work. I do have a video called Joined Up Country, which you will find useful in this respect, um, showing you how to do the double stops and the shuffles and moving between chords in a meaningful way, uh, which I think you will find quite useful. Now, the most interesting thing in this is if you get to get a solo. Um, I seem to remember that in the Johnny Cash original there are no solos, but um, you should try and get one if you can. And I would base the solo around the C minor blues scale. <laughs> that. You could do it on the C major blues scale, but I think the vocal line mainly goes with the minor blues feel and it's a much more interesting and hard-edged kind of feel. So just have a listen to me improvising on the minor blues scale. Notice that I was making no reference to the chords whatsoever, and um, so this is it's a good approach if you're a beginner improviser because you don't have to think about the chords. But um, there's a danger of you getting lost and the person you are playing with getting lost if you don't refer to the chords. So better to um, to shift a bit to uh, like a, uh, something that actually feels like an F and. And it feels like a C, and uh, if, you, if you just emphasize the chord changes, and then you can still improvise around that. 
but I'm going to, what I'm going to give you is an actual written solo, um, not the greatest solo in the world, but a, a solo that would work and just gives you an idea of how uh, you might use the um, minor blues scale to, to create a solo. Okay, I'll go through this line by line. So we're going to start off with um, a E flat with the fourth finger and slide down to the C. So uh, on here, all of that in one bow. Let's do that again. Three, four. Okay, then we've got a repeated phrase, uh, G, B flat, C. Repeated phrases like this are good because um, you don't have to do very much thinking. <laughs> so, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we've got a bit of Georgia shuffle. Again, one idea is lasting quite a long time. Let's just do that again. Three, four. And then sliding uh, fourth finger to second finger. So that's... Uh, and then we're going to signal the F coming with an uh, E flat, E natural, up to F. And here, second finger over first finger, sliding up to third position. So we're still second finger over first finger. So this is the blue scale again. And then C major. This is when we're going to do a E over G, and here we are briefly going to a major field. And then for the final line, an F over an A, uh, an F over an A. And that final line, a descending line from the C to the C, with a slide up of that first finger. So let's hear all of that with the backing. this I'm going to play you out with another uh, improvised solo I will send you a copy of these dots if you like if you subscribe to the channel and send me an email and there are lots more songs like this or elsewhere on the fiddle channel and if you would like to help me keep these coming then do consider subscribing to my patreon page and among other things you will get there a download of all of my PDFs which I think is around 300 so far uh, thank you for watching, I look forward to seeing you again soon.